You're the Gray Fox. You're under arrest for... for... Uh, for all kinds of stuff. You're wanted dead or alive. I'm... I'm choosing dead. Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be exploring how to unlock the hidden history of the Gray Fox's cow. And the surprising way to steal the Gray Fox's mask early in the game. But first, we must meet the infamous thief. And to do so, we'll be exploring the quest Turning a Blind Eye, which can only be received after completing Taking Care of Lex. After which, we see our contact Screever in our home in Breville a final time who welcomes. The esteemed cat burglar honors me. We then ask, so... Any other special jobs we can take on? I have no more jobs for a thief of your skill. You have no need of the Doyen to provide you work. However, there are rumors that the Grey Fox himself may call on you soon. Wait for contact from him. Keep the guild fences busy. Shadow Hide the Hunter Stunned, the Grey Fox himself will finally call on us. Our quest updates. When I'm in the cities, I'll have to keep an eye out for messengers from the Grey Fox. He could call for me at any time. I should wait in the Imperial City if I want them to find me quickly. Heading to the drenched waterfront district, we're soon stopped by our old competitor, Methrodel, who informs. I have a message for you from the Grey Fox. What is the message? The Grey Fox has a task for you. Meet him at Helvia Cecia's house in Bruma. Shadow hide you. As the thief wanders off, we note in our journal, Methrodel sought me out and delivered a message from the Grey Fox. I'm to meet him at the home of Helvia Cessia in Bruma. He has an important task for me. Finally, I'm going to get to meet the head of the Thieves' Guild in person. Arriving at Bruma's east gate in the evening, we search to the south for this Helvius's house, and a middle-aged Imperial stops us outside. The Grey Fox is waiting for you. Really? Where is he? He's inside, downstairs. Don't keep him waiting. Cautious, as we aren't so sure what to expect, we see a nearby guard, who ignores us and wonder how many are on the infamous Grey Fox's take. Inside Cessia's house, we find the top floor empty, and true to his word, inside a downstairs bedroom sits a man by a fire, wearing the unmistakable grey cowl of the grey fox. Approaching him, he insists. Come, we must talk. I see you got my message. We can then respond rudely. <laughs> You're lucky I wasn't busy. Curb your tongue, Shadowfoot. I am the grey fox. If you ever want to become a master thief in the guild, you had better learn respect. Otherwise, it is an honor to finally meet you. I have need of your special gifts. There is an item hidden away in a remote monastery. I need you to go get it for me. The monastery is extensive and well guarded, so you should make sure to be well prepared. Should you succeed, I will pay you well for your services. We can admit, well, this is a monumental task. I'm not adequately prepared, I'm afraid. Preparation is the key to success. Come back to me when you are better prepared. Or I would be honored to help. Capital! The monastery is called the Temple of the Ancestor Moths. It is where retired blind moth priests go to wait out the rest of their days. I will mark the location on your map. Look for it in the far northeast of Cyrodiil, beyond Chaden Hall. I need you to acquire Sevilla's Stone. It is a large crystal with special properties that I need to gain advantage. Remember, do not shed innocent blood. However, there is no blood price for slaying the stone's guardians, human or inhuman. When I receive word that Sevilla's stone is missing, I will be here, waiting for you. With our quest imminently waiting, we pause and further pry. Look, uh, we've been waiting a long time to meet the infamous Grey Fox and learn more about your <laughs> strange cow. However, he immediately dismisses. I don't answer questions about myself, particularly when they come from a shadow foot. Shadow hide you. Speaking of the cow, there is a hidden way in this quest to learn of its history from the Grey Fox itself, and we'll also explore how to steal it later in the video. But for now, 
The Grey Fox and his departing words, Shadow hides you, are poignant indeed, as the Daedric writing running down the centre of his headpiece, when translated from Daedric text, actually reads, Shadow hides you, meaning the motto likely predates the guild itself, but who exactly etched it on the mask? Well, we'll have to learn later. However, attempting to speak to the guild master about this, he dismisses. Don't you have something to do? You're a sneaky looking sort. Shadow hide you. Leaving, departing Helvius' house, a quest updates. The Grey Fox has given me the task of recovering Sevilla's stone from a monastery known as the Temple of the Ancestor Moths. It is in the mountains somewhere north of Chadenhall, in the farthest corner of Cyrodiil. Killing the human guardians of the stone will not put a blood price on my head, but killing innocent people will. The Grey Fox has promised me 500 gold coins. Arriving in the northeastern section of the Dural Mountains, we come across a settlement beset by butterflies fluttering carelessly about. And our quest updates. I have found the Temple of the Ancestor Moths. Now I have to locate Sevilla's stone. Maybe I can persuade one of the monks to help me. To the north we see a stone temple, and just east of it, a small graveyard and a sizable crypt by its side. Directly east of where we stand is a small quarters, no doubt to house the rumoured blind monks. Once inside we see signs of life, but no monks, as there is a roaring fire by two nearby beds. Directly to our right is yarn, silks and freshly made clothes, as if a large portion of time is dedicated to textiles of all things. I guess they're going to keep warm. It's only by the southwestern wall we immediately learn the origin of the yarn, as the book Pension of the Ancestor Moth reveals. To be read by all novitiates of the temple, the order of the Ancestor Moth is as ancient as it is noble. We nurture and celebrate our beloved ancestors, whose spirits are manifest in the Ancestor Moths. Each moth carries the furion of an ancestor's spirit, Loosely translated as the will to peace, the Furion can be sung into the silk produced by the ancestor moths. When the silk is in turn spun into cloth and embroidered with the genealogy of the correct ancestor, clothing of wondrous power can be made. Adepts of our order are gifted with prescient powers. The wisdom of the ancestors can sing the future into the present. For this reason, our order and our order alone has been given the privilege to interpret the Elder Scrolls. These writings exceed even the gods, both Adra and Daedra. Such insight to the inner fabric of reality comes at a price. Each reading of the Elder Scrolls is more profound than the last. Each leaves the priest blind for longer and longer periods of time. Finally, the last reading achieves a nearly sublime understanding of that scroll's contents. But the priest is left permanently blinded to the light of this world. No longer can he read the scrolls. This monastery is dedicated to the service of these noble members of our order. They now live out their lives with the ancestor moths that they so love. Their underground demences are well suited to the moths. They raise and nurture the fragile creatures, singing to them constantly. They harvest the silk and spin it into bolts of cloth. They weave the cloth, embroidering it with the genealogies and histories of the ancestors that spun the silk. This is their new life. As they tend the ancestor moths, so we tend the blind monks. While they toil in the dark, we serve in the light. They need food and water, we provide. They need tools and furniture. We provide. They need secrecy and anonymity. We provide. They need purveyors to sell the fruit of their labors. We provide. At one time, we also provided protection. Many generations ago, Gudrun came to our temple. Newly blinded by visions of what was to be, she brought with her new teachings the visions of the ancestors foresaw the need of the monks to defend themselves. They train and practice the teachings of Gudrun constantly. They are the masters of the sword of no sword, the axes of no axe. As a novitiate, you will learn the teachings of Gudrun. You will learn the ways of the peaceful fist. 
You will learn to serve the blind monks, and you will learn to provide. In time, you may attain the peace and insight of the ancestor moths. Utterly perplexed at the tales of these monks, their apparent blind counterparts they care for, and the supposed utilization of Elder Scrolls, no less. A recurring item we've heard about when serving the Thieves' Guild. It's then we begin to search for answers and head to the temple up the path. Once inside, we see three monks in white robes in various states of prayer. Approaching Brother Holger, who faces us, he scolds. Shh! This is our time for silent prayer. You may wait outside or quietly in here. We usually finish around the 11th bell. Post 11th bell, we dutifully follow the monks after prayer time and stop one brother Hridi on the stairs who questions. What can this peaceful monk do for you, stranger? I'd heard of a beautiful stone the blind monks have here, a uh, Sevilla stone, I believe. I've never heard of it. Why do you ask? Oh, I suppose you haven't heard of the blind monks either. I don't understand what you mean. We can see just fine. After raising Hredi's disposition through conversation, he opens up. Go ahead. I'm with you completely. Great. You know, we've already read The Pension of the Ancestor and are really only intrigued by the idea of blind monks and Elder Scrolls. And you serve them, yes? We serve the retired moth priests from the Imperial City. The work they do leads to progressive blindness. They live in utter darkness in the secret catacombs. Of course, it doesn't affect them because they're blind. May you always wear soft silks. Hmm. So the brothers do open up. And thus we seek out Brother Holger in the monk's quarters and he questions. I hope you have found your stay here pleasant. What can this peaceful monk do for you, stranger? Hello, brother. I was actually looking to learn about the Stavilla stone here. Who is this uh, Sevilla? A former lover, perhaps? I don't know anyone by that name. Yes, a former lover. Here's something you may also love. Go ahead. I'll take that and thank you very much. And he suddenly shares. I really shouldn't be telling you this, but I know you are trustworthy. The blind monks in the catacombs guard the stone. It's said to have magical powers. Don't tell Heridi I said anything. I could be banished for telling you. Don't worry, I won't say anything. Where are those catacombs, though? Well, all right then. I'll show you. Please be discreet and don't bother the other monks. May you always wear soft silks. Curious, we follow the monk over to the northeastern catacomb building. Once inside, we see a shrine with the monk's signature silk offered to their deity, and following past the tombs embedded in the wall, we find Brother Hrolger at the end of the hall, unlocking the door for us. On his way out, he instructs. There are torches in the barrel. A quest then updates. I've entered the catacombs of the blind monks. The Grey Fox hinted that the true guardians of Sevilla's stone would not be subject to the blood price. I'm betting that also means they won't be too happy to see me. I better be careful from here on. Entering the catacombs, we catch a glimpse of an exiting monk as we sleuth down the hall on his trail. Past the large well-lit prayer room, illuminated by fungi it seems, although clearly blind as they do not detect our presence. If we decide to brazenly brush up against one, we quickly learn they're not at all defenseless. Filthy pickpocket! Ah! What did you take? Ah! Ancestor! Got my hand! Your... What's that the matter, getting ah! tired? So much for peaceful fist. Instead, delicately lifting a key from a prelate, we sleuth past the many monks and edge our way deeper into the bowels of their coveted catacombs, past all manner of traps, until we find the Shrine of the Moth. Guarded by a single sentry standing by a floating dark crystal and in between two slabs. Although we're clear to kill this monk, however, as we approach the unsuspecting monk, drawing our sword, a dark, well-kind stone buzzes to life in the center of the room, 
and turns a menacing red before flinging a deadly ice blast in our direction. The monk, clearly addled by this revelation, does not grasp the gravity of his situation as we turn the deadly crystal's capacity for carnage to our convenience. Ah! As it exudes a blast that kills the poor prelate where he stood, and as we collect his robes and sword off his crumpled corpse, we then turn to collect the sacred Sevilla stone before the dark well-kind crystal can end our trespassing. Our quest then updates. I have Sevilla stone, now to get back to Helvia Cessia's house in Brumont. It should be noted, as we exit the cave system, our quest marker attempts to point us the way we came. However, to the northeast is a shortcut which holds an easily missed chest with random loot. However, the true boon is incredibly easy to miss as it's not only in the dark, but not inside the chest. Instead, it's a slip of paper sitting on top of it, which says, Instructions, the Grey Cow. And this is a critical piece of information needed for the Grey Fox to reveal the dark secret behind the cow early, as it reads. The Grey Cow of Nocturnal shrouds the wearer's face in shadow. No light or magic of detection can penetrate its depths. To look upon Nocturnal's face without the cow is to view the depths of the void. A man would lose his mind to see it. Recently, it has come to light that the grey cow has gone missing. This must be at the whim of Nocturnal, for she could reclaim it easily. The Lady of Shadows has seen fit to reveal that a curse is laid upon the grey cow. Whosoever wears it shall be lost in the shadows. His true nature shall be unknown to all who meet him. His identity shall be struck from all records and histories. Memory will hide in the shadows, refusing to record the name of the owner to any who meet him. He shall be known by the cow, and only by the cow. I'm directing a triad of moth priests to investigate this tale. They shall determine the truth or falseness of the story. They shall determine the present whereabouts of the Grey Cow, be it in Tamriel, Oblivion, or beyond. All curses can be broken, even those laid by Nocturnal. The Triad shall determine how this curse may be lifted, so that the Moth Priests may safely wield the Grey Cow. So, the rumour that the Cow is a cursed Daedric artifact, belonging to a Daedric Prince Nocturnal, no less, are true. And, knowing this, the monks wish to reclaim it for their own ends. Further perplexing is the fact that the Grey Fox willingly put it on his face. Now, in desperate need for answers, and with note in hand, we leave the catacombs and return to Bruma, where Helvia Cessia brazenly states in front of his house, The Grey Fox is waiting for you. Sure enough, the Grey Fox awaits us down in his basement, greeting. Come, we must talk. I hear the monks were most... hospitable. <laughs> hospitable. That's one way to put it. They love that Sevilla stone, by the way. My sources tell me that Sevilla's stone has gone missing. Do you have it with you? We can then lie and say, um, let me... let me go get it. I had hoped you would have it with you. Go get the stone and return at once. Otherwise, here is the stone. Capital! Now I can see past the palace defenses. Oh, it's a good thing the Emperor didn't know they had this stone. He would have had it destroyed or taken it from them and kept it under lock and key in the palace. When I have learned what I need to know, I will call for you again. Let us leave Helvius's house now. He has served me well and deserves his peace. It should be noted, if we killed any of the three brothers during the quest... Help! Murder! Help! Ah! Murder! Ooh! The Grey Fox would deviate. Now, for the bad news. You committed murder to retrieve the stone. I am forced to remove you from the Thieves' Guild until you pay the blood price. You may pay me now, or Armand Kristoff later, should you choose to return to my Good graces. Forcing us to pay our way back into the guild's good graces. Capital. I hereby reinstate you into the Thieves' Guild. We do, thanks to the note, however, have a special dialogue that won't be seen unless it's in our inventory, asking, 
How did you receive Nocturnal's cow? You think this is Nocturnal's cow? Where did you hear about that? Oh, uh, just a lucky guess. You should know better than to give heed to rumors. Instead, we come clean, saying, I found out from a note in the monastery of all places. Those monks were as interested in your mask as you were in their stone. I see. I suppose there is no hiding it from you. No hiding. What a joke. My whole life is hiding. Everything in that document is true. My identity cannot be known. In fact, I just told you my true name twice, but I bet you don't remember it. You and I have even met before, when I was not wearing the cowl. To your clouded memory, he and I are two different people. My own family doesn't even know me. I would give much to be rid of the gray cowl. And its curse. Shadow hide you. With the quest concluded and the shocking truth of the cow finally revealed, which brings us to stealing the cow. It is possible to steal the grey cow from the grey fox, provided that you have advanced through the Thieves Guild questline to the stage where you've met the grey fox. Now that is important. First then, we must exploit the permanent bound items glitch to obtain a weightless helmet. Now this is done by conjuring a bound Daedric helmet, having it be damaged and repairing it before it disappears, allowing the refreshed helmet to be dropped at zero weight, which only works without the unofficial patch, mind you. Although you can also use other weightless helmet slash hoods, such as the Mage's hood to steal the cow. So I guess you don't have to glitch it. But second, we can then reverse pickpocket the Grey Fox and place the bound helmet in his inventory striking him once to prompt him to equip the bound helmet. Help! Help! I'm being attacked! Now you may also strike a conjured creature three times, and he will come to your aid with his new helmet on. The grey cow will now be unequipped and can be stolen from his inventory. He, of course, has an incredibly high sneak rating, even without the cow, so save first as you're extremely likely to get caught. Although we will be immediately expelled from the guild, notably the Grey Fox has foregone one Daedric artifact for another much more ridiculous looking one. Outside, the citizens of Bruma are stunned. You're the Grey Fox! Unfortunately, so too are the guard. You're the Grey Fox? You're under arrest for... for... Uh, for all kinds of stuff! You're wanted dead or alive! I'm... I'm choosing dead! Then pay with your blood! It's the Grey Fox! You're under arrest! <laughs>